So what is Triumph? We are Canada's Particle Accelerator Centre. We're a world-class hub of research, education, and innovation. We're home to about 600 staff and students, and we've been, um, been around for over 50 years. We are a national asset uh, driving research locally, nationally, and internationally, connecting Canadian researchers to the world. So we have a really unique facility at Triumph. We're on 13 acres, and we're the only facility of our kind in Canada, and really unique in the world. In total, we operate six cyclotrons and two linear accelerators on site. We have over a kilometer beam lines delivering particles to targets and detector systems across our site. The heart of Triumph has been and probably always will be our 520 million electron volt cyclotron. Uh, this is a photo taken when it was still under construction. As you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable feat. Uh, it's over 18 meters in diameter and has been um, generating incredible science for over 50 years and, and really is still the key to much of the science that we are, are doing now and, and will be doing in the future. At Triumph, we have been thinking a lot about sustainability in the environment the past few years. And in fact, uh, we recently developed a new 20 year vision. So we developed a new 20 year vision document in 2022 called Discovery and Innovation for a Better World. And it really lays out some of the things that we think are really important for Triumph and the world uh, in between 2022 and 2042. As you can see, we want to be a global leader in discovery science, um, but we also want to drive youth inspired research, uh, particularly in um, the green technology area, and we want to leverage our infrastructure and expertise uh, to make an impact that's going to change the world. As you can see, uh, we also want to be an innovation hub translating discovery science into sustainability solutions. So uh, I think it's become an increasingly important piece of what we do, and we're really interested in trying to play a role in addressing the global challenges that we're all facing. We do have a track record of le research leading to impact. And so, um, you know, one of the things that we have done in the past was create a consortium to develop a new production process for technetium 99m and medical imaging isotope that is very commonly used the most commonly used imaging isotope in the world there was a critical medical uh, isotope shortage that resulted from the closing of the chalk river reactor in eastern canada um, so triumph led a consortium to develop a new technology that uses tabletop cyclotrons uh, located in the basements of hospitals. So that means we don't have to rely on a few large nuclear reactors that must then ship imaging isotopes to clinics all around the world and, and, and deal with the resulting uh, carbon footprint that hospitals can uh, produce the amount of isotopes that they need locally. So this technology has been licensed to a successful startup company called Artemis and is now commercially available. Uh, we're also looking at um, impacts in other sectors. So for cleaner and greener mining technology, uh, we have uh, an incredible technology that is based on uh, muon detectors and artificial intelligence. So the project is called Earth X-ray for Low Impact Mining, and it's a project that will enable mining companies to identify density and magnetic anomalies with greater resolution and certainty up to a kilometer beneath the Earth's surface. So really what it, it, it gives you is an X-ray like image uh, of the Earth. And so that means you have to do less digging. Uh, the detector has been now miniaturized to the point where it can fit down a borehole. It's a really exciting project. And in fact, Ideon is the lead on a $13.5 million Canadian digital supercluster project that includes Simon Fraser University, Diaz Geophysical, uh, Microsoft, Firewood, Sync, and MyTax. Uh, so we're, we're really excited about the future of mining and the impact that we can have on that front, all related to MUMON detectors. So what other climate changes can we address? So we know that green power is needed to fight climate change and nuclear power is a really important piece of that solution, but it does have its own challenges and nuclear power uh, challenges include high level long lived nuclear waste, the risk of nuclear incidents, and it is in fact costly to manage and store the waste generated from nuclear power reactors. 
Um, in addition, not all nuclear power reactors are created equal. So the waste stream that um, results from using Canadian can-do reactors requires a different specialized solution because the waste is different from the reactors that are, are used in, uh, in other parts of the world. So this is just a diagram of, of a typical nuclear reactor. Um, there is a, a nuclear reaction. Uh, steam is generated and that steam is used to generate electricity. And in an accelerator driven system, um, the nuclear reactor would still do its work. However, the leftover nuclear waste would then be um, irradiated by a cyclotron. And once that cyclotron irradiates the waste, another generation of power is created. Uh, more heat, more steam, uh, and therefore more electricity is created. Uh, and then um, the other piece of it is that, in fact, we're using nuclear waste to produce power, and we're also making that waste far less radioactive. So uh, what we are looking at then is a subcritical uh, process that has zero risk of nuclear reactor meltdown um, that would be caused by a run away chain reaction in a typical nuclear reactor. It would run on used nuclear fuel, very, very highly economical on that front. And then it's burning these long lived radioisotopes, um, resulting in a significant reduction of high level radioactive waste inventory. So let me just give you an idea of the scale of this. So uh, right now, the, the nuclear reactor waste, um, the, when there is no reprocessing of the waste, uh, it takes approximately 300,000 years for that waste to decay down to the level of natural uh, uranium in terms of radioactivity. So there are um, processing systems that are deployed in France, the UK, and the USA, uh, where the fuel is reprocessed, and that means that the decay cycle shortens to around 10,000 years. With ADS, accelerator-driven systems, um, using a cyclotron, the cyclotron would transmute the fuel and it would take the decay cycle down to around 300 years, which is a much more uh, imaginable time for us to be dealing with, with the waste. So I think we're really excited to try to do some research in this area and we'll be working on a white paper in the coming months to, um, to elaborate a little bit about how we might think it work and what the challenges might be for such a solution to be implemented. We're also working with other groups, uh, collaborators and companies on their clean energy projects. Uh, there is a company called General Fusion, which is a Canadian company actually um, based in Vancouver, British Columbia, um, actually one of our suburbs called Burnaby. And they have a technology that um, they hope will generate fusion power in the future for, for the earth. Um, one of the things that they need to do is to, um, to, to provide a proof of concept using a, a neutron detector. And so we are working with them to deploy our expertise in photon sensors into developing a specialized custom design neutron spectrometer for general fusion. Uh, the project is going really well and we're really happy to be working in a collaborative way to try and advance uh, this technology innovation. We're also working with other people in this field, um, groups including uh, Canadian nuclear laboratories where we're working uh, to help them characterize materials used in their small modular reactor projects. Um, there's also a Canadian company called Dual Fluid, which is working on a, a different small modular reactor project. And again, uh, working with them to leverage our expertise and infrastructure to help them characterize some of the materials that they uh, would like to deploy in their technology. In terms of other uh, clean and green projects, this is a really exciting one. How do we take the concepts um, that we discover as part of our discovery science activities and apply them to real world problems? So this is a photo of um, a technology that is used in a neutrino experiment. So this is a, a photo um, from SuperK. And one of the, the projects that is now in, in process is a project called Hyper-K. So hyper uh, is going to be a neutrino observatory in Japan. And this is a, a science project of, of global proportions, literally. The, uh, the hyper will feature a ultra-pure water tank 
that holds 250 million liters of water in a tank that is approximately 70 meters high and 70 meters in diameter. And it's lined with all of these neutrino detectors. This project would be eight times larger than the current Super K project in Japan and be located 650 meters underground um, to reduce sort of the interference uh, by surface level radiation. There are 20 countries participating in this uh, quest for neutrino uh, detection and, and Canada is in a lead role here. But we had uh, one of our researchers think, oh, well, you know, how could we deploy this technology in a real world setting. So the success of that project depends on the water in the tank maintaining its crystal clear purity. And so they've developed these detectors to try to monitor uh, the water in the tank to ensure that it stays as clean and clear as possible. So can we take that same technology and use it as a real time water monitoring technology for drinking water? That's sort of the question that we're asking. And uh, one of our researchers, Dr. Akira Kanaka at Triumph is leading a project to try and, and figure this out. He's collaborating with researchers from um, Saskatchewan, from Manitoba, and one of the Canadian First Nations uh, to see whether we can actually uh, develop, build, uh, and test a prototype to see whether this um, clean water monitoring technology can be used to help uh, monitor drinking water for some of our remote communities. We can also use the same underlying technology, which relies on single photon analyzers for clean air monitoring. Um, so this is again using that same underlying technology, but trying to see whether we can deploy it to test whether our air is clean. So uh, we have a, another set of researchers that are using the same um, technology to see whether they can develop uh, forest fire detectors, clean air monitoring detectors. Uh, so we'll see how that project goes. We're also enabling uh, better batteries and new quantum materials at Triumph. And again, part of developing these new technologies is really understanding how they work and how the materials in the components work to make better or worse uh, batteries and quantum materials. So this material characterization piece is really important and it's something that at Triumph has some unique capabilities in. So we have a combination of spin polarized local probes that can help researchers characterize the materials that they are developing. So how can this be useful? Uh, we can develop uh, with our researchers better lithium ion batteries that may enable future generations of electric vehicles. Uh, we're also um, enabling better grid storage batteries for clean energy transition. So maybe our houses would be able to be powered um, by uh, storage batteries instead of um, oil or uh, hydro. Quantum materials can also be used in new superconductors, thin films, nanomaterials, magnetic materials, um, things that are used in advanced computing. All of these uh, advanced applications require a, a deep understanding of how the components and materials actually work. So at Triumph, we have some really special uh, probes, um, mu -SR and beta NMR probes that our expert researchers can work with um, materials researchers to help them understand and characterize uh, and determine which battery materials are better than other battery materials. So thanks very much. That's uh, just a little glimpse into some of the projects that we're working on. If you have ideas that you'd like to share or um, collaboration opportunities, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'd love to hear from you and have a wonderful World Environmental Day. Thank you. Bye.